Okay, I saw this week that Tyler Carpenter was doing some chassis flex testing on his car and kind of thinking in that direction. So I thought there might be some interest in it. So I'm going to do a video on uh, my experience with chassis flex and what people are doing and, and uh, what I always did. So let's roll the intro and let's talk about chassis flex a little bit. I've spent the last 30 plus years working on race cars, building race cars, and racing cars. And I'm here to help you better understand racing technology. Chassis flex, I think, is something that people have gone back and forth with over the years. What's too much? What's too rigid? Do you want it to flex? And so let's um, let's start off with a little bit of history. Years and years ago, like in the GRT big era when those things were really fast. I saw Garrison one time at Eldora, and he was telling the crew, he was looking at the front end, and he was bouncing it a little bit, and he had him loosen up that bar that goes, oh, we call it the overmotor. Bloomquist always called it the overmotor, too. It's that bar that connects the two front shock mounts on the top, you take it out and you tighten it up. Well, at that time, that was maybe late 90s. Um, he was having Wendell um, loosen up that bar a little bit just so the thing would flex a little bit. And then even before that, GRT had a really good car. And then they put like seven or eight bars in there to stiffen the car up. And a lot of people thought that uh, killed the car. And a lot of people struggled with it. So as they took that new GRT and they took those bars out there, I think there were seven or eight, and that new GRT, they called it the computer car because the computer kind of designed it and flexibility. I don't know the, all the story to it, but I know guys that have cut those seven bars out of that car in the 90s, and that car basically came to life. And then they went to a, like a really soft car, a floatable X car, and where the X in it was just on um, tubes, it wasn't welded solid, the X in the bottom of the car, a floating X car. And I don't think a lot of people really liked that car. Um, I know one particular guy, for sure, he welded up his X and the car came to life. So that got me thinking into the line of maybe a stiffer car. A stiffer car will allow you to be more accurate and it, the, the suspension will be more touchy. So then we fast forward and I got started building these cars with the Scheffler group over there. And um, we had started putting our over motor bar, um, like the traditional deal where the bolts go parallel to the ground. Well, what I did is I stood that those bars up and put the bar and the bolts down through the top, which made it more rigid because when that front end goes to flex, if it's not running on those bars going horizontal, It'll actually create a stiffer front end to that thing. And that's the first thing I did. I started thinking really about the flexibility in the front end because I thought the flexibility with the steering inputs and everything, the more that flexed, the more chance it was to bind 
with the rack, with the shocks and springs. It just, that was my initial focus. The next thing I started doing is really beefing up the rack underslung plate and everything else. And the front end, what I called, I think uh, Rayburn called it uh, the cross member, the K member. It's where your struts go forward and bolt. I wanted that whole system in the front to be very rigid. Even if you buy really thin tubing and you put it in there, you can really stiffen up that front end quite a bit. So that's what I started doing. The next step is stiffening up all that underslung part, make that stiffer. One thing that I did too, and I think it's worth a mention, is a tube, when you have a 90 degree and you put a gusset tube in there, it's gonna be stronger than what it was without it. But if you web it, I used to get, I used to go on these air, uh, aircraft sites on the internet and you can buy chromoly tubing that's like long and wing shaped and then you can cut it apart. And that's what I use to gusset my cages on my best cars and the front end pieces that would go down on those best cars and you make that whole thing like a web it's still tubing you have to cut it off at one side and probably reform it a little bit but i think that's a better gusset than just a thin piece of tube you can get them on the internet at a lot of experimental aircraft sites Another thing we did too is years and years ago, Bloomquist was really, um, didn't want anybody looking at his cars. And a friend of mine had a Bloomquist car. Well, we are at the races and he wrecked a rack. And my boss told me, get underneath there and help him change our rack out. And when I slid underneath there, we were changing the rack out. And I look what he did. He took and he boxed in his entire rack mount. At that time, the rack plates were stamped steel. They, were, they had some gussets going down that you weld up. But the Bloomquist rack mounts in those cars was a, a really beefy top plate and then a bottom plate in the entire interior and everything was all boxed in and welded in, had through bolts, used Allen bolts up through there. It was really a beefed up structure. Because if you think about the amount of stress that goes into that rack when your right front is loaded up and you're driving into the corner, um, that, that stuff, all flexes so you i would really beef up that rack support and that whole rack plate in the front now on to my story about the the cage and the down tubes years and years ago my buddy had a rayburn and he took the rayburn and he sent it to msoe which is an en engineering school here in milwaukee and as a class project, they did some testing on that Rayburn um, to find out where the flexibility is and where they thought it flexed the most. Well, what they found is that left side halo where it connects to the cage and the door bars there, that whole left side there is the most flexible part of the car that made a difference. So then, you know, you, you chalk it up to, you know, engineering kids, hey, that's cool. But then I got my hands on a flexibility deal um, from NASCAR. And what they kind of did with their engineering and 
figuring, and they figured the same thing, that left side cage area was the most flexible part of the car. So when a dirt and asphalt, it's basically the same configuration. Everybody uses that same halo with the, the down tubes, the eight pillar bars on that left side. It's all kind of the same, whether it's um, pavement or dirt or whatever. But when those two said the same thing that really got me thinking, in that direction. So what I did is we started really beefing up that whole left side halo deal. When I put, you had your cage down tube, when I put my eight pillar bar in, instead of splitting the tube to give the window opening bigger, I moved the cage forward and got it bigger. But then I extended an eight pillar bar from what I call the crotch up there, where the the regular down tube bar goes in and the halo moves through, I put that A-pillar bar right at three inner con connecting points at the top of that cage. And that seemed to help quite a bit. And then I used my tubular long gussets and I put them at the front and our, our cars kept getting better the stiffer that I made them. I also started making a tube that came from the door bars. And actually, it was really tough to bend and everything with the, um, the headers there. So what I did is... I made the door bars come out and then I made a small tube that sleeved inside there and went almost all the way to the right, uh, the left front, um, what I call the uprights where the, the, the upper control arm mounts there. And the header would go down through that place and, um, and I welded up all solid once I got my header figured in there, but that really stiffened up the front end also. Another thing I did to stiffen that all up is the brake mounts. We had our mounts uh, internal. Instead of having the reservoirs on the outside, we had reverse mount pedals and we mounted everything underneath the dirt shield there. But then when I built the when I built the pedal mounts, I really beefed that up, thinking that any pedal flex there you're gonna feel, and it would also help um, triangulation that left front corner. Now we'll fast forward several years, and this past like two or three weeks ago, I went to the dome. And I went to Kenny Wallace's shop and I got poking around there and everybody was concentrating on getting Kenny's autograph and everything else. And I was poking around at one of his cars. Now, I was told his car is a Hoffman car, but I didn't, I don't know cars by looking at them. But what was interesting is he had his A-pillar bar on the right side didn't appear to be welded. His A-pillar bar came down and there was another like tube or something going up in it. And then he had black, flat black tape around it, just like his chassis, like he was either taping it up to waterproof it or maybe disguise it a little bit but that bar didn't connect that thing was floating in there now we talked about how much you stiffen up the cars but now this year i go to a, a shop and they're actually adding some flexibility back in the car it's making me think now about different things. And now, 
a lot of people will be thinking like, well, you're talking to maybe car, just car builders, you know, people who weld their own stuff together. But I know we live in a Costco world where you buy your car, Costco tells you how to set it up. You go out, you put your PJs on and you race, but don't be afraid to beef up and get the gas axe out and a welder and maybe start experimenting with some of this stuff. You know, even if you were to do bolt-in pieces that you can unbolt later, um, these cars are not, I guess, antique relics that we have to protect. We have to keep moving these things forward. So I would just suggest even a local racer, you get an idea, just do it. Just give it a try. You want to weld some gussets in there? Give it a try. The worst you're going to have to do is is cut them out of there later if you don't think it worked. But we have to keep moving forward and not rely on Costco to tell us what's good or bad. It's up to us as racers to figure that out. So that about sums it up. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and uh, that stuff really helps me out with YouTube. So uh, have a great week, and we'll see you in the next video.